Hello, welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast, your premier Arizona Cardinal podcast. Like and subscribe. Leave us a five star wherever you get your podcast. Johnny Venerable in studio, Bo Brock, live at the PHNX headquarters in downtown Phoenix. You know, I, on my nice commute in from the Copa, uh, I thought, oh, maybe we'll get some good Cardinal news today. And then mm-hmm. the opposite happened. That's right. Uh, yet again, Bo Brock, team is in the news for all the wrong reasons. And I would argue this is the most serious of them all. Yeah, this is not, you know, speeding ticket. This is not, uh, you know, organizational dysfunction as far as the inability to win football games or if your quarterback's studying hard enough or not. No, these are some serious allegations that are uh, directed at the organization and its owner, Michael Bidwell, from a former employee, a guy who's been in this, within those walls for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, this this was one that uh, is, is people who like to celebrate this team and, and root for this team and hope that they get back on the right track with a new regime, front office, coaching staff, and a, and a facelift as far as the roster goes. When you see these, it's like this. This is this is not one of those fun days. No, and, and this is where we lean on the chat fans of this organization that you and I and everybody at PH and X want. A better product. They, they they deserve better than what's alleged. And if any, if there's a shred of truth to any of these allegations, and we'll continue to say that they're allegations because it's from a previous, a former employee uh, that the organization is outlining, you know, is troubled. Right? Yeah. Um, it, it's it's one that there's gonna, we're in the fact gathering point of this process, yeah. and we'll continue to be. Uh, and, and we'll see what uh, the NFL decides to do as well. Yeah, we'll do our best to paint the picture. I know everybody jumping in the chat, crushing it, as always. Yeah. Be sure to hit that like button. And a very common uh, piece of uh, feedback we're getting from Cardinal fans is Sarver 2.0, sell the team, Michael Bidwell. Well, how did we get to this point? Well, here's how we got here. So uh, it was released today by uh, Mike Sando of The Athletic and then simultaneously Adam Schefter of ESPN that uh, ex-vice president, uh, Terry McDonough, who worked with the team, and to your point, was like Steve Kimes' right-hand man for mm-hmm. a long time, uh, has accused Michael Bidwell of gross misconduct, including cheating, which includes burner phones. We're going to talk about that. Discrimination and harassment in an arbitration claim filed Tuesday by the former executive to Roger Goodell. Terry McDonough took this information, filed it in a court to Roger Goodell saying, Michael Bidwell and the Arizona Cardinals, they do these things and they do them regularly. And again, nothing's been proven. There's not an official investigation that we're aware of. It's a he said, he said type of scenario. But I think what's troublesome is we have a pattern with this franchise. We have a pattern from the NFLPA coming out and saying, this is what the players think of you. We have a pattern of 2022 and prior Your GM goes to jail for an extreme DUI. You've got players arrested. You've got coaches being fired. And it, it starts at the top, apparently. Michael mm-hmm. Bidwell, the the items that are outlined in this article, in these kind of co-articles, are alarming. They're disturbing. Mm-hmm. And frankly, they do not make you feel good about the state of this franchise right now. Right. And, and you see uh, SPHX 626, the cheating part. Yeah, it is hilarious as far as the cheating. But then, then there's the serious allegations where you say, what's the... What's the point? Who? Why do I want to root for this organization? I, you know, I, I used the analogy earlier today, Johnny. It's like watching Ozarks, right? Right. Like, who are you rooting for? Like right. all of the people in this show are awful people, right? So why do I continually, you know, go out there, <laughs> buy tickets to the game, buy the jersey, support everything Arizona Cardinals, and then they turn around and they can't even be good people to the good people of the state within their organization? Yeah. It's just, it's it's you know and, and we can't come out here and, and point fingers and say you know that that they did this because as I pointed out these are allegations but albeit it's very serious and it's just another uh, horrible story another horrible headline uh, but this this might be the topper you know after going through just a brutal 2022 season yeah so we're gonna get to the burner phone in a second but the thing that stood out to me the discrimination of a couple different demographics in the Cardinals organization. How about this from Adam Schefter and Mike Sando? Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got a graphic here, the grievance. And this is about two pregnant women, two pregnant employees. The grievance also said that Michael Bidwell reduced two pregnant women, one who was five months pregnant, the other seven months, to tears after screaming at them with abusive and bullying mistreatment. 
So that's not their superior. That's not their manager, unless Michael Bidwell was. That's Michael Bidwell verbally, I'm assuming, abusive bullying treatment toward two pregnant employees, um, which is, uh, it's disgusting. It's incredibly disappointing and disheartening if it were to be true. And then there was an all, there, I don't know if we have it on another graphic, but there was also talk of um, something to the effect of, targeting uh, black employees, African-American employees with mistreatment as well. But this was very specifically two pregnant employees were bullied and abused by Michael Bidwell. Mistreatment. Yeah. And then to to be fair here is in the Arizona Cardinals through uh, PR agency an external public relations advisor to the Cardinals. There's a lengthy uh, rebuttal to, to most of these allegations and, and also uh, a look at who the former employee was in Terry McDonough, the former exec uh, that was relieved of his duties shortly after the team decided to kind of go through its full reset. You know, Steve Keim was, he, he put in his reg resignation a week before Cliff Kingsbury was fired, but uh, they go through a, a bunch of these claims from McDonough and, and pretty much try to, uh, plead their case to, to prove that they're, they're false. So, uh, and, and a lot of the, a lot of it, basically the, the organization is, is saying that it's, it's Terry, Terry maneuvering and providing specific details on distortions, uh, to try to pretty much put him in a position to maybe capitalize on it in some, yeah. in some fashion. Yeah. I, I, you can say, well, Terry's in the wrong, Michael's in the wrong. I mean, we can have two entities that, were bad people, right? Made horrific decisions, and one can be right and wrong, and one can be wrong. Um, it doesn't have to. It's it's a gray period right mm -hmm. now that we're operating in. It's not black and white, and I, I think that that kind of gets me to to the original point that I want to touch on because this is where, rightfully so. I mean, we just went through this with Robert Sarver and the and the Phoenix Suns. I mean, this isn't the L.A. Clippers with Donald Sterling, but it's like owner doesn't win. Owner has a reputation, right? owner needs to leave, right? And while I, I don't behoove fans for pointing that out, right, a lot, a lot of the Valley has been cry out crying for Michael Bidwell to sell this team for a long time, the mm -hmm. Bidwell family, right? I I do not think we're anywhere close to that happening. And, and here's why with my novice take and opinion is th the NFL has yet to act in any capacity. You pointed this out before the show is like the suspension that was levied to Steve Keim was the suspension given by Michael Bidwell was not given by the NFL. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch on the burner phones here in a second. The NFL would have to launch an investigation. And I think for the investigation to lead him to believe that the team would need to be sold would have to be substantial. I mean, you think about, you know, Washington just now maybe might sell their team with Dan Snyder. And you think about all the egregious occurrences that have happened with that organization, mm -hmm. and it might just now be coming to a head. I mean... I, I say this is the only, but this is one of the few instances that we have like this with Michael Bidwell. Michael Bidwell hosts Super Bowls. He's, from what we've heard and seen, he's well-liked by the other owners, right? He has a relationship with Roger Goodell. So I, I just don't want people to get their hopes up that tomorrow the team's going to be right. owned by like Jeff Bezos right. or something. There's we, no Mac, Magic Johnson no. and Meyer group that are going to offer $6 billion, $7 billion, and they're just going to say, okay, yeah, that sounds right, and I'll just take my medicine including billions of dollars and, right. and, and go away. No, I mean, this is this is a family that's owned this organization uh, as, as long as almost any family has owned an, or, owned an organization in the NFL. Uh, you're very proud of that. And, you know, Michael Bidwell used to be able to kind of uh, kind of push his, his chest out and say, at least he's not, he, he would never say this, but he, he wasn't his father as far as He's been owner. a better owner right. than his he's late father. He's been a better, but now he's coming closer to his father than he was you know the the kind of the opposite of of Bob, or Bill Bidwell. Yeah. I mean, who is one of the more polarizing owners in in sports, not just Arizona sports. So uh, this is this has been a you hope humbling experience. You know, you have your source, Johnny sources that that say that Bidwell is is being open minded. Yeah, uh, as there's there's new faces in the organization, and it was it was it, as this all kind of comes to a head. It, it's. It's it's really proving that the people that occupied that building for far too long were doing a lot of dumb shit. Can we can we also say and it needs to be said? And Bo and I were saying this back in January when there was talk and eventual they're replacing all the football people. Right? right. Austin Ford and Jonathan Gannon are making all the football decisions now. You're seeing all of these 
leaks and announcements of reassignment firings. We're here to tell you, I mean, Gannon and Austin Ford are running the football side of the Cardinals, which is which is good news. If you're looking for good news as a Cardinal fan, the externals are being enabled to do their job by Michael Bidwell. But on this show about three months ago, when we were talking about doing an organizational reset, you know, we floated the idea. Maybe it's bigger than just football with this franchise. Yeah. And there have been some people enabled within that franchise for far too long. And they need to take a 36,000 foot view of how they do things. Mm -hmm. And when you've got X team employees coming out on Twitter today, and there's a number of them, you can go find them saying this is an organizational problem. This isn't just, hey, they lost this weekend in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, that's where I would be looking. Yeah. And I, and I would say... I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility if you're looking for immediate change. You know, Michael Bidwell, do you consider stepping down as team president? You have a new team president come in and say everything needs to change within this franchise of how we treat people, of how we operate. I still think Michael Bidwell is going to own this team indefinitely until something else comes out. But I, I think it's within the realm of possibility considering all the negative press that keeps, you know, swamping this team and overflowing onto this team to say, OK, Let's get some new people outside of just the football ops to inevitably show other people how to treat people, right? There's been word that the HR department has only been around a couple of years and maybe yeah. they don't have teeth. Again, this is all just kind of hearsay. But man, I mean, we see it. There's turnover within the franchise outside of just the football ops. Right. They they need some new people in there. Yeah, they do. They do. And and, and it, from, from just the organizational standpoint, and, you know, at, at some point it, you can run as much as you want from uh, you know the circumstances and the variables that go into you being one of the worst teams in football, right? Right. Third third worst team in football yeah. last year, right? As far as the NFL PA comes out, and then those surveys that were conducted, and you come out the second worst, only behind the Washington Commanders, and it's like Bidwell had the crutch where he's like, well, at least I'm not my father, right? I'm a better owner than that. At least I'm not the Washington football franchise. At least I'm not anymore. Dan Snyder. Yeah, at least I'm not Dan Snyder. And now he doesn't have that the ability to do that any longer. Right. I mean, this is this is nationwide the the optics of this organization, and, and it's becoming you're, you're seeing that there's a lot of truth to it, un, unfortunate truths to it. You know, worst teams in the NFL, worst NFL PA grades, and it's th these unacceptable allegations. Uh, if, if any of it's true, uh, Arizona deserves better than this. The people that work for that organization, they just deserve so much better than this. Yeah. And as far as Michael Bidwell, even though he might have had the best intentions and he's always said that he wants to win and bring a Lombardi trophy and a Super Bowl trophy to the desert, is being is the president of this organization, I, I think now it, it's a sobering look of, of, okay, maybe I just can't do it. Maybe as far as the day-to-day -day operations of being the president of this organization, I, I can't handle it. It's too much. And, I, and he needs to just step back and, and hire somebody to do that uh, because it, it's it's been bad for far too long. Yeah, and it's unfortunate for all the good people that work for that franchise because, I mean, you, you go work for an NFL team, yeah. I would assume most Washington people that work has for... Washington a president. It's like... It's not Dan Snyder. It's right. Jason Wright. That should be your dream opportunity to yeah. go and work for a franchise, an NFL franchise, right? We were fortunate we get to cover it on a daily basis. But to go be a part of the franchise, I would assume, is, is a dream for a lot of those people. And to, to walk into that environment, alleged environment, right? But where there's smoke, typically there's some fire. I, I is It makes me sad for those people that that, that occurred, potentially occurred... It affected their mental well-being, their physical well-being, their family's rights, having to relocate potentially in a lot of circumstances. You just, at the end of the day, we're only as good as how we treat people and the respect we show people. And if, you, if you're not known as a franchise that treats others with respect, then you shouldn't have an NFL franchise, point blank, period, right? It's not. It's bigger than just, and I, we're going to talk about like draft compensation. Could they lose draft picks? And I know a lot of people, rightfully so, how does this impact you know, 2024, 2025, how does it impact people today? It impacts people. People have been hurt by this franchise directly or indirectly. And that needs to change fucking right now. You need to have a representation within this, this organization. You need to have a representation within the Valley of sports to just say, Hey, we're, we're, we're bettering the community. We're bettering people's lives and the environment we, in which we surround. We were asked to come here once upon a time from St. Louis to do that. And instead right now, for 12, 18, 24 months, you've, you've been doing the opposite of that. 
And that has to change. And whether, to Bo's point, it's Michael who can make that change or a third party that can come in as a team president mm -hmm. or if more information comes. I'm not saying there's not a possibility that Michael Bidwell at some point walks away from the Arizona Cardinals. I, I would think, though, you, you were going to need something substantial. What was yeah. it that happened with Robert Sarver? Hundreds of employees came out and eventually was overwhelming and the NBA took action, right? Donald Sterling was a very specific instance where you had recordings and it was clearly him. I, I just I don't think we're even close to that occurrence yet. And so at the end of the day, you just got to you got to go with what the information you have. And right. and right now, I don't think there's enough information, not even close to be able to to force Michael Bidwell's hand and to sell the Arizona Cardinals. No, it's a great point is is we point you know, we say that this is the fact finding and, and as far as what's being alleged and I, I think it even goes beyond the burner phone like way beyond it trans yeah. transcends cheating in the in the league and not even cheating uh well in, yeah. in 2018 one of the worst seasons in this franchise history where they go three and 13 it did land them kyler murray but the fact that steve kime gets the extreme dui in july and michael bidwell suspends him for five weeks he finds him you know what he said was a record amount yeah for an nfl executive over 200 grand he was fined and uh, then following that season, you've got both Bidwell and Kime sitting there at uh, at the podium and telling you that they're going to hold themselves accountable. And people were skeptical of that. And yep. I think that this is just vindicating those people who were that this this organization has a tough, tough time with accountability. And, you know, is, is this an opportunity for the league to have its eyes opened uh, to, to hold this organization more accountable than it's been holding itself? You like the the you know did a blind squirrel find a nut with in in Monty Austinfort and Jonathan Gannon because they do seem like two quality people and so do the people that they're bringing in right you have yeah. to be excited about that but still you know when when it's at the top still somebody that's been a constant throughout the losing and the dysfunction. Uh, you know, they, they might have to come with more change. Well, and we you didn't think you could get more change no, at this point. No, and you've seen. I mean, questionable people can hire good people. I mean, uh, Bruce Aarons was once employed by this by this franchise for a prolonged period of time, right? We've seen it with the Suns, with Sarver's with his hirings before he eventually sold the team is what's built. You know, the foundation of what the Phoenix Suns are now. So it's. I wish it was cut and dry, black and white, but right. it's not right now. There's right. too many gray areas to operate in. We can only do it with the information that we have. But we'd be naive to sit here and say, well, this this team's been sun, sunshine and rainbows for 24 right. months and everything's great. And this is just a farce and this is an ex-employee trying to get money or whatever. No, you have to take it seriously because of the reputation, right? You are your reputation. The Cardinals' reputation not a good one right now. A uh, reputation that is good. Our friends at BetMGM Sportsbook. We want to thank everybody who came out over the weekend. Saturday, Bo was there. I was there at the BetMGM Sportsbook. Watch along for the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament Final Four. We had a great time. We're going to keep the good times going. If you haven't heard, we are going to be watching Cardinal games this fall. There's going to be reason to cheer, in part because we're partnering with BetMGM on the Great Lawn, inside the sportsbook, every single game day, including away games. Come and hang out with myself, Bo Brock, the PHNX, PHNX Cardinal family. If you don't have tickets to the game? Come hang out with us. Uh, we're super excited. And to kick off that excitement, if you haven't signed up for the BetMGM app yet, now's the perfect time. Playoffs with the NBA right around the corner. We've got our guys, PHNX Diamondbacks, about to tip off big dub against the Padres today. Use bonus code PHNX. You're going to get up to 200 in bonus bets on your first wager with our friends at BetMGM. It's super simple. Here's how it works. Sign up using the promo code PHNX. Place a pregame Moneyline wager in the amount of at least $10, 10 bones, on any market on the standard odds price. You're going to receive 200 in bonus bets instantly. So 10 gets you two. Regardless of any outcome of your situation with the wager, you're going to be in the green. Just make sure you use the bonus code PHNX when you sign up, and then now you get to listen to our friend Shay Diefenbach talk about the description and this claim. 21 plus to wager. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in Washington, D.C., Mississippi, Nevada, New York, and Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467 369 New York. Call 1 800 Next Step Arizona. 1 800 522 4700 Kansas, Nevada. 1 800 327 5050 Massachusetts. 1 800 Bets Off Iowa. 1 800 270 7117 for confidential help Michigan. 
Received an award today uh, for best <laughs> ad reader. I'm an award-winning ad reader on this program for my work for Four Peaks. And Four Peaks makes it so easy. I'm about to rock, walk off the set for a couple <laughs> different reasons. That that might have been the worst part of the show just now. Uh, what are you talking about? Four Peaks. It's so easy to say <laughs> such no incredible things about this brewery that's woven within the fabric. Some great fabric of the great state of Arizona. And we are more than pumped to hold our draft party april 27th it's going down we're actually gonna uh, we'll put some details out on social emma created an un- incredible draft graphic on april 27th at 2 p.m man we're gonna be out there at 2 p.m is this gonna be an all is that what it event? said i guess we'll yeah, be there at 2 we're, p.m we're hanging out at 2 p.m the event starts at 2 okay PM. we're gonna be out so there we'll be there from 2 to whenever i don't know am i gonna be able to broadcast this <laughs> for, for the show well it's gonna be tough because of course four peaks has so many incredible beers on tap of course brewed right there at the 8th street location where we're gonna be and they've got the bourbon barrel you're gonna have to take it easy on the bourbon barrel because those are a little as far as the uh you talked about my bur- by vol- volume there my my bourbon output in uh, indianapolis for the combine was, <laughs> was troublesome you hit your 2023 output uh, and so now you're just going to add on top of that. But join us at Four Peaks on Thursday, April 27th, the first round of the NFL draft. We're going to be there for every single pick. And we've got draft day specials going on. Redberg Lager, of course, you got the $3 pints, $5 pitchers, and your usual PHNX beer specials. You don't want to miss it at Four Peaks. In the meantime, you got a Suns game tonight. Go watch the Sunnies beat down on the Spurs. Always fun to watch the Spurs lose basketball games and watch Kevin Durant and the Suns improve the 7-0 and with KD in the lineup. Watch it at Four Peaks because it's synonymous with a great time watching sports and drinking beer. Check out their events calendar as well, fourpeaks.com slash events. Get yourself one of their tasty IPAs, the Hazy. Get yourself a Raj. Go get yourself the flagship uh, Kilt Lifter or the Wow Wheat, the number one wheat beer in Arizona at Four Peaks. Got to be 21 years or older. Um, So I feel confident in saying Cardinals are going to keep their draft picks for 2023. Anybody who's freaking out on Twitter because of this alleged burner phone that we're going to get into, this incident, uh, I think the draft picks are safe, which means you're safe to come and party with us at Four Peaks uh, Thursday, April 27th. All right, let's talk about, I mean, I think it's the least important aspect, but from a football standpoint, it's very important, potentially, and that is um, Steve Kime was suspended by Michael Bidwell in 2019 because in 2018, tw- well, in 2018 I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Um, because he had an extreme DUI in which he had to go to jail for overnight. Michael Bidwell acted, suspended him five games, five weeks, and had a lofty, what was it? How big was the fine? It was like, over 200 grand. 200 grand fine. Michael Bidwell imposed that fine, uh, fine and suspension. All right, so according to this article by Mike Sando and company, Steve Wilkes was the head coach at the time. Um, they were, I guess, not allowed to talk to Steve yet. They did through what has been called a burner phone. This is according to Terry McDonough. Um, So there's a bunch of different questions on here. Did they violate any rules? Well, how could they? Because the NFL didn't levy the suspension, Bo Brock. Um, If they can prove this, do they lose draft compensation? I mean, let's let's just get into all this. What do you make of this, this burner phone situation? And do the Cardinals have a loophole because they themselves set the suspension? I think that the the burner phone situation is just more fuel for people to kind of laugh at this organization because yeah. of the context of it, right? It came during one of the worst seasons ever. You had one of the worst GMs at the time who constructed that roster so poorly. If you look at the 2018 roster. You don't like Sam Bradford? Sam Bradford, that quarterback room, Bradford, Glennon, and Josh Rosen, the chosen Rosen. The trifecta. You had, I mean, all you really had on that football team was a, a young Buda Baker, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Son Reddick, you didn't know how to utilize at the time. Yeah. Uh, you had Chandler Jones, you had Patrick Peterson, and Buda Baker. That, that, that was pretty much it, right? Yeah. And David Johnson, who who was having a top Mike McCoy was just running him right into the line of scrimmage. That was, but when you look at how poorly that team performed, you said you cheated for that. You cheated. And the results were still that, uh, that's almost comical. But you know, when you look at the rest of this, the allegations and, and why the request for arbitration is there and the details of that, I think that's where the NFL is going to have to take a very hard look at whether or not they want to investigate this organization. And yeah. I think that's where the true, where the, the Cardinals really, at the end of the day, whether it's, you know, within the next, within this offseason or years from now, mm-hmm. are going to be punished the most. Yeah, I just, I don't think anything's imminent. Um, right. 
and if you're looking for solace and take a breath in terms of Cardinals and this rebuild, which I understand. Listen, everybody's a fan. We're fans. That's why we cover this team. So it's like we want the product to be better and as quick as possible, right? Mm -hmm. We want to expedite this rebuild. So it's like, oh, man, if they trade down from three, are they just going to end up giving picks to Goodell and company? Are they going to be fined? Draft picks. Just like I think we're a long way from Michael Bidwell potentially being under fire of potentially having to sell this team. I think that's an extreme. I also think this is kind of an extreme. I, I don't think they're in immediate danger of losing draft picks. And I would say don't discount Michael Bidwell's relationship with Roger Goodell and and the, the product he puts on when they come here and they host Super Bowls and it is just glowing. I mean, frankly, people love the Valley. They can come here and they can host championships for other teams, as we've seen. And Michael Bidwell is a great host. The city of Phoenix is a great host. Um, this is not Schneider esque. This is not the Miami Dolphins trying to lure, you know, Tom Brady and a, and a head coach that's under contract, right? This is this is different. It's still bad. Um, if if the league was going to impose a suspension on Kime and Michael Bidwell was like, I'll just get in front of it now, and you've got documentation of that, yeah. and then he was contacting them, maybe thinking, well, I can contact him, I can do this, that, and the other. It's not great. Um, do I think it warrants like a first round pick to be forfeited? I think we're a long way from that. Have we seen Washington forfeit any significant picks yet? No. I, the only thing I can compare it to is Miami gave up their first this year because they tried to lure. But that was actual like roster coaching staff implications. Right. Like, that would impact the they game tried directly. To, they tried to steal Tom Brady and Sean Payton. They tried to have Sean Payton and, and Tom Brady join their franchise while they were still right. under contract. Right. And I don't know all the fine finer details, but it's, I mean. Uh, it's, it's, but it's still unbelievable to me. That Kime was so bad that his, well, yeah, the ghost dude, of that, Steve Kime could right. be haunting this organization <laughs> even long after he's gone, long yeah, that, after his resignation. That's, just, the that's how part. bad that guy was. That's impressively bad that he could, he could like by next off season when they've done a, a thorough investigation, the NFL if they cho do choose to do so, that Steve Kime, Monty Austinford is going to be in his job for a year. And he's still got the ghost of Steve Kime haunting the hallways. Right. Of the should we just facility. go? Should we do a show and we just go back and look at all the transactions that occurred from those five weeks that Kime was suspended? <laughs> I mean, seriously, should we go do that? Also, you didn't have confidence in the rest of the people in your building. You were that reliant on Steve Kime. I think that that that's, that's an indictment. Yeah, that's a big indictment. And, yeah. and so is the fact that this, you know, regardless of what McDonough alleges, right? And and if he's the whistleblower on this. It, to, to to see what the organization and, and things you, we've also heard outside of the organization about McDonough and the fact that he held his position for so long. And what, what was he even doing? Right. We like there was there was conversations about like, well, he was just kind of around Steve. He was in the press box. He really didn't have any authority toward the end of it. Um, and you I know, mean, the organization, as far as this, this, uh, yeah, they released a statement basically saying, I mean, it's a long statement. It we, was a prepared statement too, by the way. And our own Howard balls are kind of pointed that out right. on Twitter. It's like Cardinals were prepared for this. They've been ready for this. They've, they've gotten wind that this was coming, um, which is good and bad, I guess. But in you 2019, be I, I think the organization w was kind of, they, they were, they, they had their eyes, eyebrows raised and, and they were looking at McDonough because this was a guy that was uh, allegedly recording conversations with the intent to use it to benefit himself, yeah. right? With, throughout the organization, he would have, uh, you know, conversations with people like that and um, it, and record them and, and hope that he could, you know, I don't know, get them in trouble and, and use it to his own benefit. But this is a guy that fell out of grace. As, as you mentioned, he was kind of Kime's right-hand man. And then in 2019, he just stopped seeing him. Like, he, his his brother was the GM of the basketball team in the Suns. Mm -hmm. his, his other brother was one of the lead. He he was Monday Night Football lead broadcaster Sean McDonough, and it was like, oh, okay, he's got these ties to the NFL. He's got these ties to the other team in town, and it's a good story. Yeah. And then he's just gone. And then now he resurfaces. I did find it interesting as I I kind of paid attention to the the front office as they was going through a facelift this off season and I, and I thought it was strange that he was still there yeah and then you find out that the first time I hear his name was today and he had been relieved of his duties and and it makes sense I'm sure Monty Austinfort was like what is what does this guy do what purpose does he serve do we need to have him and and they 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 uh, they relieved him of his duties mm -hmm. and then they were going to compensate him for the next year or so.
And yeah, you've got old Terry saying, oh, I've kept receipts. You sure you want to fire me? And and listen, if any employees like openly recording conversations or not openly, but it's known that he was recording conversations. He's been trying to drum up dirt on the franchise for the last couple of years in preparation for this. I mean, that's that's worrisome all around. That's worrisome for Terry and the Cardinals. And, you know, you read the statement. I, I'd encourage you to read the statement. You wanted a, kind of a clear picture of this entire thing. It's like 20 paragraphs long that the Cardinals prepared. And and man, does it go into detail. It goes into this, detail. This is a separate PR agency. It's not the Cardinals. He, he does operate on behalf of the Cardinals. Right. Yeah. He's, rep, he, he's representing the Cardinals yeah. in this statement. And the statement goes into detail about how Terry maybe changed as a person and the Cardinals mm -hmm. were observing his behavior. And again, it's a very much he said, he said type of scenario. Um, and again, I don't know how much you want to hold in terms of the weight that comes out from folks on social media. I, I'd encourage you to do your own research, come up with your own conclusion. Last thing I want is to, to come on here and tell people how to think or what to say or what to believe, yeah. right? If you believe that the Cardinals did these things and you're dis disgruntled and you're disgusted, 100%. If you believe that the Cardinals deserve the benefit of the doubt until the NFL does an investigation, you are you are free to do that. And support the team how you want to do it. We're just here to present the facts as they come out. And right now, there aren't too many. There's just a lot of the Cardinals have been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Something must be going on. And it's unfortunate because every day we want to come on here and we want to talk about football and how to get this football team better in a position to finally win a Super Bowl. And it's like, shit, man, we're going backwards again. We're going backwards right. five steps talking about Michael Bidwell and, and misconduct in the office. And we're talking about how other teams laugh at your weight room and the fact you got to pay for meals, right? We're talking people are laughing that your roster is mismanaged and you're picked last in the NFC, according to our friends at BetMGM Sportsbook. Um, so that's not conversations right. we want to have, uh, but they're conversations that we have to have. Yeah, like AZ Cards Nerd 11 saying, my question is, why did it take five years for Terry to say something? Because he was he was gain, fired. He's gainfully employed for those five years, right? I mean, you would think. And yeah. then he was no longer, and he felt like, okay, I've got a case here, and uh, you know, it's it, that that's where I think you've got two parties where the, neither looks great, right? When when especially when both are presenting uh, allegations against each other, yeah, and and it looks brutal for both sides, and you know, the victims obviously are. <laughs> The alleged victims in in the the case for arbitration against the Cardinals and and the fans here that are yeah. trying, as you pointed out, trying to find anything to be positive about with this organization. Well, I mean, as we, it as it goes through these changes, and it's like Gannon, Monty, you, you like it, the the players coming in, you know, finally embracing the uh, yeah, hitting the reset button. But with that, there was such a mess left by the previous organization, and it's I can't I haven't stressed this enough today. It's such it's so good. It's such a benefit to this organization that their G, their previous GM is gone. Yeah. I mean, Steve Kime was a cancer. And I know a lot of people were saying, well, it starts at the top of Michael Bidwell. I don't disagree with you. Michael Bidwell enabled Steve Kime. Yeah. For it was a long it, time. It was a brutal, toxic relationship where, yeah, I feel like you're exactly right, where Bidwell enabled a guy like Kime to, it, to do whatever. And he, it felt like Kime was kind of running things for for a while like yeah he, he could do anything yet he didn't have the resume or the merit to do so yeah let me ask you this and no one's asking us to ask this but i think it, it it's worth asking michael bidwell's been under fire for six to 12 months now is there a scenario in which he could come out the other side of this do you think and and be the owner that i think once upon a time we all believed he was that he could be an owner that get get this team back to Super Bowl, win a Super Bowl, have the confidence of this fan base again. Do you think there's a path to that? Not in the near future. I don't think in the near future. No, I mean it's 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 either you know kind of take your hands off the organization. And I'm not even saying get no, away. I know. I, I'm I, saying owner, not team president. Right. But you own the team. How no, do you get I mean that the, the only thing back? that that happens is that it's going to be a day by day process, right? Being being you know make sure you're being a, a a good manager of the people that that you employ right that that should be easy that yeah. should be even for the worst uh football operationally run organizations you should at least treat the people uh in inside those buildings with respect right and kindness uh but it, it's going to take a long time to undo a lot of this mess a lot of uh, what's what's gone down over the last the mess that's been created in the last th three months, but it's been more so over the last 20 years, 
uh, it's 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 not a mop and bucket thing. This is something where you've got to bulldoze the house. I just yeah, I'm uh, full agreement. I I don't think you can undersell or oversell the fact that Dan Snyder potentially is going to be out of the NFL soon, and the pressure that will put on Michael Bidwell. And I know there you could say, well, they're not apples to oranges. They operate in different you know leagues or or conferences, divisions. I should say they're on different sides of the country. Dan Snyder was the one you always could point out and say, that's toxicity. That's the mm -hmm. lowest example of an NFL owner. If he's gone now and he's replaced by somebody competent, I mean, where do you look at? Where do you look at other than Michael Bidwell and say, you need to get better. Yeah. You need to treat people better. You need to run your franchise better. Not only from a winning standpoint. I mean, winning is very much secondary here. I do believe you, you have an operation that people want to come to. You get the best people. Winning follows. But I mean, if you can't be trusted to treat players and employees with respect, where they feel comfortable, they can come do their job every day and feel right. empowered to do their job. I mean, we're, you're starting in phase one. The mom and pop store down the street needs to operate that way, much less, you know, a $3 billion NFL franchise. So that, that to me is like, he's under a microscope. I think the best course of action, if you're asking my opinion, would be to step away and hire a team president ASAP to come out, come out and say, I, and get a good f football person, team president person to come in. And I, I don't, I have a list in front of me, but that, f that feels like a slam dunk move of like, yeah. shit's hitting the fam. I need to do my part in cleaning this up and I need to get a third party in here, just like you did with your GM and your head coach and your assistant GM that can come in and help us because we need help but not, more than not just from within those walls. No, not even close. Right. right? I mean, it, because you need that team president. What is Jonathan Gannon and Monty Austin for doing on the football side of things? They're telling some people, thanks for your service. We're going in a different direction. Right. The team president on the non-football side of things would do the same thing. And I'm sure that would make a lot of people there uncomfortable. But it's like when when this stuff's coming out. And there's probably going to be more reports from right. former employees saying right. about how toxic it was. But if, if you start to make significant change, especially with the decision makers who had been in, in far too comfortable and in their place uh, for far too long. I, I think in the chat, people are killing it. They continue to do it. Uh, Eris agreeing with you, Johnny, hire a good team president. I think that that could expedite things. If, if uh, there was a uh, because that shot first came out and said, I, I think if, if Bidwell holds a press conference and, and holds himself accountable, I'm, I'm over that. I've seen that press conference far too well, many times. I, I, I don't think that... Like the, the Steve Wilkes thing that happened at the end of the 2018 season, right before they hired Cliff Kingsbury, and Bidwell and Steve Kimes sat there and said, we hold ourselves responsible. We look at each other. We look at ourselves in the mirror. We're going to hold ourselves accountable for this, not to make the same mistakes. And they made those same mistakes, if not worse, as far as the entire organization goes. It's like you've lost any kind of ability for me to believe when you say that, that you're holding yourself right. accountable. You have Actions to Actions at this point. Yeah. You have to So act. an action would be, I haven't done a good enough job running this organization and from the day-to-day -day standpoint as a team president, I'm stepping away. I'm going to hire somebody and I'm going to empower them to make all those decisions, right? And yeah. change the toxic culture that's being alleged in this organization. Get somebody in here that respects Monty Austin Ford and Jonathan Gannon, but most importantly, can establish a culture that's not toxic within the day-to-day -day operations of your franchise that can come in and help manage people. Right. I mean, it's the most simplistic concept, but it's something that seems like it might be broken with this franchise, which is unfortunate because, you know, you guys can make fun of like the Cardinals social media and that kind of thing. But if, if people are afraid to do their job and to speak out when there's, um, you know, abuse that's taking place, there's bullying that's taking place. I mean, that that's not a, that's not a place that's going to attract good people. That those are those those poor people are going to fear, you know, for their livelihood going in every day. Like, oh, I want to say something. I want to do my job. But then if, if I lose my job, how am I going to pay my mortgage? You know, scouts make like no money. I mean, th this, yeah. this whole scenario is it really is just sad yeah. like that. When I read that report this morning, I know people want us to go in hard and sell the team. I feel bad for the people that work there <laughs> because, again, you go in every day and that should be your dream opportunities to yeah. work for your, the franchise, presumably that you fall, that you appreciate, that you love. You want to make a better place. And it's just it's not a, a, a welcoming environment. So I would say the number one thing is come out, make a statement, not in person, not a press conference. I just don't know if that's going to happen. Well, no, I, I'm not I saying know, it I don't will. know if any statement is going to come beyond, especially with his legal background, former prosecutor knows that 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 game too much, too well. 
to where he's going to come out and, and put himself in a position to where he could they could use it against him. It, it's just I, I don't think anybody is as much as the romantic fans want to have somebody come out and truly hold themselves accountable and say the right things and say, hey, this is what went on. This is truly what went wrong. Uh, this is what's false. Like that doesn't even work for anybody any longer. It's just it's it's just not it's as far as from a legality standpoint, it's just not something that you you will see. I no. just, I'm not. Well, no, I'm not saying. It. It. I right. don't. I, I would think the live the likelihood of a lot of this stuff is far fetched unless more information comes out. No. I mean, the Cardinals aren't going to act unless their hand is forced yeah. in a lot of ways. And so, how bad does it get? Does it get bad with sponsorship deals? Is Michael Bidwell forced to make a change for the betterment of his franchise for the bottom dollar? Uh, we'll see. But I know one thing. I need no G's because after today, <laughs> it has been a whirlwind. And again, we're in draft season. I want right. to be excited. I want to talk about prospects and what yeah, this McShay is. McShay drop a nice little mock draft today. I just I need to chill out. And yeah. I'm going to chill out with my friends at OG's. OG's, uh, listen, creamsicle, mm -hmm. you got to have it, right? It's flavoring <laughs> your dreams right now. How about the Aqua? I'm going to have trouble sleeping in the Aqua Berry Sleep Edition, <laughs> CBN, THC, two to one ratio. Helping flavor your, your dreams. How about this one? We, we know you love the orange creamsicle. How about the strawberries and cream rebranded as the happy balance? Mm -hmm. I'm happy talking about OGs and not what's going on with the Arizona Cardinals. Um, again, happy balance. It's official. OGs, new strawberries and cream gummies are live on the shelves. They're live on the streets. As always, you can Even find Maricopa, them. Even Maricopa, they have them. It's they, unbelievable. They do. I had to work <laughs> to find them, but now I'm spreading the good word in my in my new hometown. Are you a sign spinner out there? Are you outside saying oh geez? Yeah, is, for is, free. Is, I do it for it my can sponsor. Be bought here at any dispensary. That's right. In and I said, even you good people of, of Maricopa, you deserve an <laughs> OGs. Check them out at your local dispensary by checking out ogbrands.com. Again, you got to be 21 and over to enjoy the sweet, sweet nectar of OGs. Bo Look, this, this organization continues to go through a, a facelift, right? And uh, not only was it the the decision makers that were criticized in an NFLPA, but also the facilities. Maybe they could upgrade their facilities like you and I have. I know Emma is, has dabbled in more furniture. They've oh, yeah. got all the furniture that's going to make your living room, your dining room, your bedrooms, our kids' rooms look unbelievable and as comfortable as you want them to be. More Furniture's got it for you. We've got a full crew right now watching sports in the PHNX studios yep. in the lounge area. Ooh. And it's furnished by More Furniture. These sleek leather black recliners. They're unreal. They recline. The headrest reclines. You can plug your phone into them. They've got more cup holders than you need. they got the LA, the LED lights. Everything you want or even just like the classic, you know, couches and chairs that you want that are going to make your living room look unreal check them out morefurniture.com check it take advantage of their their white glove delivery you start buying furniture in the next couple of weeks it's going to be hot out there you're going to have to start moving around some furniture and moving around some weight you don't want to have to do that johnny and i are actually going to go play some delivery men for phnx sports here we're going to go move a bar i wish i had that white glove delivery for us this afternoon because uh, I'm going to throw my back out, guaranteed. Johnny Muscle's over here. He's good. He's, Your 5'6 he's, <laughs> brother will take care of it. He's been in the lab. He's been working out enough. But uh, we don't have to do that. Morefurniture.com. Save big on the best furniture in the Valley when you head to morefurniture.com. Do we want to talk about McShay's mock? Yeah, do we, let's do, do, we it. do we cover? I mean, do you guys it's feel like levity? Who was who was the person in the chat that said mock draft time? LOL. Yeah, because I think people wanted a little. Uh, a little lighter talk we're, today. We, we're going to push our Tennessee trade down mock draft till tomorrow yep. with the folks at PFF. Because, I mean, fuck, guys. Uh, and, <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to talk about Todd McShay did a mock today. Because um, the NFL draft is still going to go. The, the Cardinals are going to make their pick. And God willing, it's going to be awesome for and Gannon crushing it. Um, Cardinals pick three. In this scenario, the mock draft scenario, Bull Brock, they trade down to four. Mm -hmm. They take Will Anderson Jr., and they get a couple picks as a result. I think an additional two and a three uh, in that scenario. So it was a third this year. And, and a two then, next year. Yeah. Um, a lot of people saying that's their preferred trade-down scenario. Anything that, that you will Anderson Jr. and you get additional picks from the Indianapolis Colts, what say you? Is that the best-case scenario for the Cardinals? It had the future on there, right? Correct? No, it was, it was just a, a it was, swap. It was a swap of first, one spot. Yeah. So basically, it costs you no, nothing. No, I want the future first. I'm greedy. I want the future first. You're off so Will Anderson is, so Jr. Okay. Isn't, I, 
doing more draft dive, uh, Will Anderson is an unbelievable and in, in the top defensive prospect in this draft, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, as we're seeing, this organization is more than just a Will Anderson Jr. away. What you serious? Uh, I think that Will Anderson Jr. would help. You know. Put more bet- good people in that building, which which they need, and, and especially uh, they'll get that on the roster side. Um, you, you like he was a tackle for a loss machine, but when you look at it, if they could trade down and stay within the top ten or on, just on the outside looking in, like a Tennessee Titans eleventh uh, overall pick, I, I don't have a problem. Especially if you throw in future ones, if you throw in immediate draft capital, because you know a pick swap to get Will Anderson, and then you get a third round pick this year. I just don't know if that's enough. I, I think I'm getting greedy and I think they can be, they have the benefit of being greedy. I, I like it. Assuming you're going to take Will Anderson Jr. I, for me, if you're going to, if you're going to do that deal and you're going to take somebody else, that's not Will Anderson Jr. We know they love Christian Gonzalez. We know they, they're sniffing around Tyree Wilson. That would be deflating. I mean, could you imagine you trade down, you get that, you get that extra pick or two from Indy. And then the fan base is ready. They're ready to coordinate Will Anderson Jr. as the newest member of this franchise. Uh, I, I also, like the player and the person that Will Anderson Jr. is, if that's not what the Cardinals need, I don't know what is. Uh, and it's not him. That would be deflating. Um, I don't think that that's going to happen. I, I think, to Bo's point, their appetite is trade down because it's going to net you more draft capital. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, just trade to four and then just trade down again. That's easier said than done. Uh, somebody's going to have to talk themselves into Will Levis, and that's a difficult thing to talk yourself into. Um, I think you got one meal ticket for this trade down. I think it's you. It's the Anthony Richardson meal ticket. Mm-hmm. And do you want to cash it in from three to four, or do you want to cash it in from three to seven, or three to eleven? And to me, it's like I feel like based on what I've heard, what we've talked about, they group Will Anderson in this group with about five to six other guys. Yeah, and and if that's the case then you take more picks. And I, again, it's not what I would do. I want Will Anderson in red and white this fall at State Farm Stadium. Please, God, make it happen. <laughs> but I, I think what they want to do is let's trade down to 11. Let's get five picks or something to that effect, a future one. And let's take a tackle. Let's take a DN. The DN from Clemson did well today. Let's take a corner, right? Maybe you can trade down again in that scenario, smaller trade down. But I think they I think they lump Will Anderson Jr. in with the rest of those guys that we right. talk about. Not an indictment on Will Anderson no. Jr. And this is this also isn't an indictment on Will Anderson Jr. He's a great prospect. He's the best in this draft. And that there's something to be said for that, but he's not generational. So if if you can't separate him so far from the pack, uh, and you can still capitalize in in trading down and it sure it, it concedes your ability to get Will Anderson Jr. Then, then why not do it? Why not? Why not take your most valuable asset and create more assets to jumpstart this rebuild? And you know, I, I like Anderson. And then you start to look at the other, as you mentioned, I was starting to look at uh, Gonzalez a little bit, looking at his tape from Oregon. Witherspoon, just yeah. a physical, uh, instinctual corner from Illinois. Like those are two guys. Like if you trade down with Vegas, I think Vegas is a very real possibility to trade up. Uh, then you just fall down to seven. And, yeah. and, and I, it's like if you were to compromise the ability to get Anderson to get to seven, I still think you're in, in a very good situation to draft a guy that's going to make an impact next season, plus maybe somebody else. I mean, they're t- they're talking Will and Levis. Next season, yeah. next, next draft season. They're talking Will Levis is going to be a top 10 pick still. So even if you're not the team that doubles down with a trade back with Will Levis on the board, you're going to benefit from four quarterbacks presumably going that high. Yeah. If you're picking 11 and there's four quarterbacks, that means there's seven position players, six position players that you're going to be able to dabble with. I, I just, yeah. it, it feels like that they're playing in that sandbox, Bo. There's not one, there's not a Nick Bosa. There's not one singular entity. I t- we talked about Jamar Chase. There's no Marvin Harrison Jr. in this draft. It's a draft where we've got some guys that we really like that are in this kind of top 10 to 15 tier. Mm-hmm. And then there's some guys that have first round grades. And then the bulk and the meat of this draft where your team can be built is on day two. And I just, I think they have an appetite. That's why they're holding out a second for D hop. They have an appetite to go into day two with a lot of flexibility, moverability, five to six draft picks. Yeah. They, it's not a Will Anderson or bus scenario. Yeah. I see some comments in the chat about Jalen Carter, who, and we knew this was going to happen that Jalen Carter, after the incident, uh, obviously the tragedy that happened in January. And then the incident where he was ready to work out at the combine 
and then ended up having to pull out of his interview because there was a uh, warrant out for his arrest and yeah. he had to leave Indy to go to Athens, Georgia to uh, to to fulfill that warrant um, and avoid having to be arrested. You know, the the red flags remain there. I don't care what his, his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, is saying and that he's a great uh, family man and, and he's a man of high character. Like, the red flags remain and those can't be... Can you imagine after today... With this franchise, right? Drafting yeah, yeah. Jalen Carter, it's 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 not. He he needs to be off the board. He is off the and board. And you hear you hear like Philly is. There's reports that Philly, if he's there at ten, Philly's gonna, has told Jalen Carter that he's going to take him. He's like, good, go ahead and take him. Philly has the luxury of taking a right. prospect like that. Right. They, they just went to the Super Bowl. It's like Howie Roseman can do no wrong at this point. He somehow he was able to change the perception of himself by by winning and, and making some good moves. Uh, and, and Jeffrey Lurie, the, the owner there, like they have the luxury of doing that. Now, like they always have to deal with the Philadelphia fan base and media Like they'll crush them if, if Jalen Carter turns out to be a scumbag. The Cardinals are in such a vulnerable yeah, they, position. They don't. It's too volatile. Right their, now. Their, their situation is literally decaying every day and they need to build it back up with a solid foundation. That's why it's like you got to be sure as much as the player hits, the person hits. And we talked about it even before these NFLPA reports came out, the Sando article. It's like this 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 player that you draft is the beacon and the example for the Allison Ford Gannon era. It's the first pick. You're going to trot that person out and hopefully be the, the co-new face of the franchise, presumably with Kyler Murray. Christian Gonzalez, from everything we've heard, fits those bills character-wise. We know Will Anderson Jr. fits those bills character-wise. you got to be 100% sold on the player uh, as well as the person yeah. like this team say what you want about Robert Kimdichi like that that was a bad pick but the Cardinals were picking at the end of the draft they just gone to the NFC title game Kime and and Aaron's hadn't been, had, had never been hotter right they could mm-hmm. do no wrong so you have an opportunity you take a risk it didn't work out right Cardinals are in the opposite of that position now I don't care how Jay, good Jalen Carter is I, I'm, I'm sure there will be folks in the fan base yeah. that would hold it against them if they pass and, he, and he's an all-pro they're just they haven't earned that credibility to take him. I'm sorry. Eris, I don't know the the tone of, of your chat here. Didn't Honey Badger off have off field issues also, but we drafted him, right? I don't recall. Can't recall. I, I know you're being sarcastic, but he's a third round pick. I think he's being serious. And, and Tyron Matthew had problems with weed back when you couldn't smoke weed or, or mess with any cannabis products at the college level or NFL level or he wasn't involved where somebody lost their life and, and he's and he's and he wasn't in the conversation like nobody was saying are we going to take take him in the top 10 they took him in the third round and then they coupled him with Patrick Peterson and his family and they mentored Tyron Matthew because they had a relationship at LSU like this is completely different like it's it's not it's not even this close is the to the third overall pick yeah, this is the third overall or seventh overall pick I don't care if you're picking 21st if the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals and you have what's surrounding this organization right now if it's right or wrong, the accusations, whatever, the dysfunct- even before today, you just don't have the luxury of taking a player with the red flags that Jalen Carter has. I don't care if he becomes the next Aaron Donald. You just sit when you when you sit and he's an ass kicker for ten years and he's and he's got a he's got a, a ring and a Lombardi trophy. You just have to say, you know what? To be honest with you, at that time in the organization's history, just weren't in a in a in a spot where we could take a kid with those red flags. They're very real. They're very serious, and we just couldn't do it. Now the Cardinals were uh, they they've had a couple you know Steve Avila the guard out of TCU there was more reports that they they are going to have Good. him as a top thirty interview Good. Uh, which you reported last week um, and then you got a couple of his TCU t- teammates and TCU I mean it's interesting it's like this team came out of nowhere and they were in the college football championship game uh, so it's played it was, in it played was, in the Fiesta Bowl in was, that stadium. It was more than Max Duggan that was impressive on that team. They're, they've I guess interviewed Quentin Johnston, the wide receiver. I don't think he's an option. I think they're just doing their due diligence there. Kendry Miller, the running back, uh, who's dealt with a couple injuries, uh, he's probably like a day three guy. And then uh, it was reported by Ryan Fowler, McClendon Curtis, uh, Chattanooga tackle, mm. talking to a lot of guys, a lot of beefy guys, offensive linemen, Jalen Duncan out of out of Maryland. He was a tackle, 6'6", 315, could be late day two, early three guy. And then DeMarvian Overshone, uh, I know this might make Cardinals fans a little uneasy, linebacker out of Texas, but he's a playmaker. They're talking to a lot of linebackers, yeah. um, which 
if you're Isaiah Simmons, maybe that makes you a little <laughs> uneasy. You haven't had your fifth year option picked up yet. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I, Avila is one of my favorite players in this draft. I think he's maybe the best interior offensive lineman. John Michael Smith's Osiris, um, the kid out of Osiris Jones or Osiris, yeah, Torrance from yeah. Florida. Fantastic. One of those guys needs to be an Arizona love Cardinal. It. I'd love to see one of The Cardinals' guys. interior offensive line is almost as bad as their defensive line. And you consider their defensive line, I I think, has no starting NFL players on their defensive line. I mean, that's why you want more picks to kind of hedge your bet that you have a chance at a bunch of these guys. You, you could sit there and say, well, we're going to get somebody at 34, and then you take them, and you're back at 71. You're like, oh, somebody's here that I didn't anticipate? Perfect. I'm going to draft that player. It, you got to hedge your bet. And you can't have these huge gaps in this draft of not being able to take players. Cardinals need literally everything. They could use a quarterback to back up Kyler Murray. They need receivers, offensive and defensive linemen, pass rushers, cornerbacks, outside of maybe tight end. And if you want to talk about running back, you know, I, I still think you take advantage of the strong class. There's not a singular position that you couldn't say Cardinals n- need to pass on a really well, you, good player. You saw who McShay had them taking in the second round, did you? Uh, running back? Which Gibbs? running back, though? Oh, Gibbs from, from Alabama? Yeah. So doubling down. Listen, that's one of what my favorite it? combos. You would do it second round? Yeah, I <laughs> listen. I'm a sucker for backs high, and I think perfect way to kickstart a rebuild is you get an electric running back in there and kind of change your offense and the perception of it. But it depends how many second round picks they have. So he he has the Cardinals at 34th overall. This like Jameer Gibbs is absolutely electric, but at the same token, it's like 34th overall. That's with a little, as, as many that's holes a little as rich, they have. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that. You, if you way. but you get if you get Will Anderson and Jameer Gibbs in the same draft, that those are your two picks. Just and, hire Nick Saban then. Just have Saban be a special <laughs> consultant to the Arizona Cardinals, uh, and he come in and say, "Hey, your weight room is ass. I'm not right. allowing my ex players to participate." But I, I listen. But, I think they should take it back on day two. How about that? Yeah. Uh, some Because this back class is fantastic. Well, I day think, two would be Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, but there's a difference between 34 and then like yeah. at the end of the the end of the third round. I don't know. Um, it this That's why they need a bunch of picks. That's why they need to go into day two and have five or six picks because that pick, if it's only 34 and they're, and they're two-thirds, you got to wait a long time to see. Let's say they don't get a defensive lineman in the first round. It's like, shit, what are we trotting out week one? We, we got to be able to get some some bodies in there to develop. And I also think that this is a this is a coaching staff that will relish finding skill players on day three and finding contributors. Maybe you don't find your next number one wide out or running back, but guys that can fill in. One of Kime's biggest problems was devaluing key positions and then overvaluing positions mm-hmm. that don't really matter and then being bad at drafting them. I mean, they've used a second or first round pick on a wide out every year since 2018. Yeah. So maybe maybe take a beat on the skill players. Well, and then also the inside linebacker position. One of the, you, he's either like pro football focus or one of their Instagram accounts keep on putting out like the top players at each position taken each and every year. Oh, I saw this. And they had the Cardinals taking a top inside linebacker in back to back years, and you're just like, <sighs> what other franchise? You does feel that? more comfortable about Zayvon Collins than you do about Isaiah Simmons. But like, can you even say without a shadow of a doubt, like? They hit on both of those picks. Like the snow, no. still got to figure it out. Like Zayvon still has a, a, a long I mean, way how, to go. He had a better sophomore season, but how many cornerstone players does this franchise have? Maybe two. Uh, and you're you're counting Kyler, right? Yeah. So Buddha and Kyler, Murray. yeah, probably under thirty years I old. Mean, yeah, that are under contract. Right. That are face of your franchise cornerstone players. They've got two of them, right? Everything else, and and a lot of people would argue Kyler's in that category only because he's got his, his contract, right? I mean, are we a, are we a lost season away from opening up that discussion? I don't think so. I hope that doesn't happen, but that that means the rest of your roster newsflash is not good enough, and you need to go find the next Buda Baker at a different position and to build up the roster. I would hope quickly, but I, you gotta let him play. I got a question. What's up? How how in our chat is Vin Diesel taking strays? What what did Vin Diesel do? If I'm not, I, you know, I don't hate that. Is, is there is there a logical explanation, Emma? Can you fill me in how Vin, how we got to Vin Diesel as the worst person on planet Earth? Not that I'm like the biggest. I, I can't tell you a movie I actually like with old Vin Diesel. I don't think I've seen one Fast and the Furious movie. That I think really? that that's that's I can appreciate that. I, I, thank you. I <laughs> listen. It was down. It was down below. It was. Uh, we all have our tropes. Yeah. Vin Diesel is the worst person on planet Earth, LOL. I mean, yeah. if, if Vin Diesel bought the Cardinals, I wouldn't hate that. <laughs> Be exciting. 
maybe they could fly the <laughs> the team plane to the moon or something. Didn't they do that in one of the Fast and the Furious movies? They took they took the cars to They went to space? Yeah, I think they went no to space. No chance. Yeah, I think You're so. talking out your ass at this point. I, I, I haven't seen the film. I have seen our good work at gophnx.com, though, from Howard Balzer, the PHNX Cardinals beat reporter. Slam that promo code Howard, H-O-W-A. RD become a diehard, pick Got up a it. fresh tea. That's because we're hating on speedsters. Got from it. the PHNX merchandise locker. Listen, I, I go under the speed limit. I don't think that surprises <laughs> anybody. It's why it takes me so long to get here. Um, draft party, Four Peaks, Thursday, April 27th. Be there myself, Bo Brock. It is free, and su- supposedly it's starting at 2 p.m. We're going to get after it all day. We're going to have a live broadcast for the entire first round and day two and day three on Friday night from the studio but Thursday is the night. Block it off. You get off work. Come out to Four Peaks in Tempe. Great environment. Great drink specials. We're going to be able to talk about food specials. Hang out all night. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Great environment to take in the NFL draft. And hopefully take in some real, actual, substantial Arizona Cardinal news. I feel like it's, in, in a lot of ways, and I hope I'm not being disingenuous, it feels like the 2020 offseason with the pandemic when there was like no news. Mm-hmm. And then the draft came, and it was a fun, good time. But the no news only comes from this franchise. They Everybody mm-hmm. else is participating in the offseason. The Cardinals are like, we're just going to wait for the draft. Oh, they're cleaning up. They're cleaning up this mess. And, and you're seeing what the heck Monty Ford is dealing with right now. Yeah. As far as they had not only personnel decisions to have to make as far as the roster goes, but yeah. as far as you know, people within that building. And, uh, you know, it, it is interesting, like, you know, it's Kyle Odegaard's great article on uh, the the trainer that was relieved of his duties. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think, I hope nobody took that as like an indictment on that tra- the previous trainer's ability to do his job. Like he was, he was widely respected. You know, Odegaard just released an article where Josh, was it Josh Miles, where yeah. he helped save his life, yeah. right? Like identifying an issue. Um, but it, it didn't mix with the path that Jonathan Gannon and Monty Osfort want to go in the future as far as how they approach it. Cause they have very specific ideas about it. So there's people that were, you know, relieved from this organization and sent packing because they didn't feel like they could do their job or they mm-hmm. didn't do their job. And then there's guys that just don't align with the approach that's going to be there with Gannon and his new staff in the front office. Yeah. And you know what? You got to let, externals come in and make their own choices. You have to empower them to do what they feel like is in the best interest of this franchise. And from what we've been told, from a football standpoint, what you're seeing, that's Austin Ford and Gannon, saying this is how we're going to make an imprint. And to bring it back to the top of the show, Michael Bidwell needs to do that with his day-to-day operations. It looks like uh, if this report has any legitimacy from Mike Sando and Adam Schefter. We've got legitimacy, hopefully, for you every day. Subscribe to the PHNX Cardinals podcast Wherever you get your podcast, take your smartphone device right now. Go into podcast, type in PHNX space. Cardinals, do us a favor, follow, subscribe. We drop audio-only podcasts with exclusive information that we don't talk about here on the show. So get your whole value. Also become a diehard at PH- gophnx.com. Bo Brock. We have a guest uh, tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. New Arizona Cardinals linebacker, special teams ace Josh Woods is going to join the program. Excited to talk to Josh. He'll join us at 4 o'clock. Uh, talk uh, about what he brings. I think he's kind of an undervalued signing. Definitely plays at a high level on the special team side of the football. We'll get into that. And then Han shot first. Yes, we're going to do a mock draft tomorrow. We'll do it live on the show. Yep. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube. Thanks for hanging with us. We're back tomorrow.